Hello from my sofa. Welcome to the channel. If you are new here, welcome even more so. Uh, this week, I'm going to be talking about the idea of having rigs, or probably more importantly, or better described, as having systems in which to make your music from. So without further ado, let's have a look at those cool Tokyo graphics. Roll VT! Yes, so as me before the title said, this week we're going to be talking about the idea of systems in music creation. I think this is very important, especially if you struggle to actually finish a piece of music that you're making, maybe with your modular, maybe on your laptop, wherever. But I have found that for me, setting up a system before I even go into making the tune or making whatever the thing is going to be is a great helpful thing. So let's go into the studio and have a look at what I'm actually talking about when I talk about systems. There we are now in my studio. It is lovely. I'm slowly getting surrounded by lights and equipment. And what do I mean by a system? Well, I guess I mean something looks a bit like this. I make my systems on these boards, but it equally goes for using something like the OPZ, which is, I have to say, where I started from, which has all of the elements that you need for a track in one place. Let me turn this camera around so you can see what I mean. So let's take this system. This is my experimental jam system. Obviously, the O Control and the O Coast together feed into this, come out via this. Well, actually, they go in via this, which is an effect unit, but then they are also routed out when I want to by pressing this button to come to this, which is acting as a looper. So within this system, I can record a drone or a progression on this device, which feeds into here, and then can play counter melodies, etc., over top of it, or even layer more up, and also have an effect. So I could theoretically pick this board up and go and pay a piece of music. Now, that being said, I think this doesn't need to be equipment. You can also just do it all in software. And for that reason, I am going to show you how my iPad system works for this ambient music I create, because I believe I have made a very excellent small system inside the iPad that I can take anywhere to make music. So I use AUM you can use anything you like. And I have a set of stuff set up as my default, as you can see here. Now, this really clearly illustrates what I mean by a system. I have Gauss, which I record into and then use its lovely step sequencer thingy to create rhythmic patterns. That gives me my drums. I use Mnnnook, which is a sort of drone synth, a bit like the Lyra, Lyra, to make my low-end droney things. And over top of that, I have the Hilda, which is my iPad-based bookless system. And then I have a piano, which is not opening. Come on, open, like that, because I love the sound of a nice reverby piano. To process all this, I have all of the eventide delays, uh, reverbs, but I prefer the black hole reverb on this. I have the spring reverb on my West Coast synthesizer, because what else would you have? And then occasionally I have this lovely tape emulation plugin to make it all sound like it's on a cassette. Driving the piano and the mononook, a fugue machine, and then two instances of particles. And what may you ask, do I do this? Well, this basically, these four things, there's nothing much going on here, but these four little applications on this tiny little iPad create all of the sounds that you might need. And they, in fact, let's uh, show you what that sounds like. Sessions, let's have a look at one-offs. Let's have a look at slow train. That's my train on the way home today. That's what it sounds like before I press play. And I will actually record this. So you will now, in a moment, when I hit record, this will all switch over to actually sounding like proper audio.
So there we have a system. Now you may have noticed that I am no longer wearing a blue jumper, I'm wearing a black shirt. It is several days later when I recorded the videos at the beginning of this video and I've been really struggling on what the message is that I've been trying to put across on this video. And really I think what I'm trying to say is there's a continuation of the video two weeks ago when I said about this as being the end of my doorless journey and it really made me ponder on what I guess the last 18 months have been in trying to achieve a thing and I think the thing I've been trying to achieve is this idea of making the perfect system and I've realized that two things number one there is no perfect system there is a perfect system for the thing that you're trying to create at that moment and there is the kind of idea of a system in your head which will never be complete and what drives gas. And you know what? I've got a bulk of bass sat just there, which to be honest, every time I try and replace it, I end up coming back to using the Volker bass. Because you know what? It just does the sound I want. And no matter how much money I spent on more expensive bass synths, the Volker bass is probably still gonna win. I feel the same way a little bit about the O control. I was like tossing up between getting the O control or the SQ1 and I thought no no the O control is what I want, the O control is what I want and you know what the O control kind of annoys me that it doesn't have tunable well the, you know they're tunable but they're not actually two notes so I then had to buy a separate hardware quantizer so I'm now having to build a very small modular rack to put some little bits of modular stuff in to quantize the O control and if I just got the SQ1 I probably wouldn't have that problem. What I'm trying to say in short is have an idea when you start this thing about where you want to go or conversely if you've got no idea where you want to go at least break down the sections of the things you want to buy into the things that you know you need to make a song or a track, whatever it is you're making. Nearly every bit of music needs some kind of drums, some kind of percussion, some kind of rhythm. You need something that does bass, you need something that does the mid-range, you need something that does the top end. So at least when you think about your system, piece it together in those sections. And even if you later on come to swap out the bit that does the bass, that's fine. But I'm pretty sure you can go out and buy four bits of kit and make a track. And I think that's the message of this video. Fight your gas. Do not get sucked into doorless. Have a vision in mind of the sound you want to make and build your rig from that. So there we have it. Systems in music, very important. You may not think they're very important, but for me, it's an integral part of how I actually am productive and uh, get the things that are inside my head musically out. And uh, if you like this video on my channel, please like and subscribe and all that fun stuff. And check out decibelboy.com, which has links to all my other things. Probably some music next week and then another little walkie talkie video the week after that on something. Who knows what that might be? And until then, stay well and uh, goodbye.